Okay, this is about the pentatonic scale and its connection to harmonic proportion. And in fact, it's built from a very simple concept, or at least we can describe it by a very simple concept. Um, if we look at the relationship of the third harmonic to the second harmonic, we can think that's a frequency ratio of 3 to 2, which means if we have something vibrating, say, 100, uh, 220 times a second, uh, the upper note would be vibrating 330 times a second. So um, now that produces, when we hear that ratio, it produces the interval of the perfect fifth. So we start from our fundamental, which we give the number 1 over 1, or just 1, and multiply by that, that by 3 to 2, to get a perfect fifth above that, a G in this case, C to G. Now we take that value, 3 to 2, and multiply it again to get a fifth above that interval, which gives us the value 9 over 4, and a D above G. And we do that two more times, 9 over 4 times 3 to 2 equals 27 to 8, and A above the D, and finally 3 to 2 times 27 to 8 is 81 to 16. So something like this. Okay. I'm in the wrong register, but okay. So it doesn't look much like a scale yet. Um, so what we have to do is look at any is we have to get them all into the same octave. So here I've indicated an octave, C to C, and that should say 2 to 1. 1 to 1, 2 to 1 is the octave. Um, and so the only, the only note we've produced so far that falls within the octave is the 3 to 2, the first one, the G. Our D, 9 to 4, is too high. And this is something that happens all over the world. That we take the off octave and divide it into steps to create scales in all sorts of different ways. And so the pentatonic scale is one example of this. Uh, so the D is too high. We drop it down an octave, a rule of octave equivalence, if you remember from psychoacoustics. Um, basically, octaves have a similar qualia. Despite their pitch differences, we associate them together and, and think of them, well, often name them the same note. And again, this is cross-cultural. So we can just slip it down an octave, but in ratio metric terms, uh, to make it, basically you want the numerator not to be twice as large as the denominator. It needs to be less than its double, so less than 8 to 4 in this case. So we just double the denominator, and that makes it a smaller ratio, and we get this interval, 9 to 8, which is the relationship of the ninth harmonic to the eighth harmonic, or something vibrating nine times to something vibrate eight times in relation to C, so we get this interval. Nine to eight, the major ninth. Then we, uh, so then our A, our fourth step, is again greater than an octave. We drop it down one octave, and now it's an A below this C, so we're okay. And the ratio do the same thing. We double the denominator to make make sure that the uh, numerator is less than double of the denominator. And now we get this interval called the major sixth. Okay, and our final step. In this case, we're actually two octaves too high. So we drop it down one octave still above this, this second C, and down another octave to E, or if we um, do it by ratio terms, 81 to 16, uh, we double the denominator, this should be a 32 here, 81 to 32, and then 81 to 64. And that's a type of major third, but if it was tuned properly, it would actually sound, it's a bit ugly, um, but that's another story. So. We don't quite, still we don't quite have a scale, but all we need to do now is we've got C, G, D, A, E. Um, we just need to put them in scalar order, ascending order. So C to G, D we're going to move here after the C, the E is going to move after the D, and the G, and then the A. 
and voila, we have a C major pentatonic scale.